Hello dear children, Namaste and very very warm welcome to our next chapter of our ICSE one shot series. So today we are going to be discussing the chapter transpiration in one shot. Okay. So I hope everything's going great and just in case you are here for the very first time in my sessions. My name is Ambika and I'm your biology master teacher right here on this amazing platform of Vedantu. Okay, guys, so let us get started. As always, I would love to start with a positive quote, okay? So remember, your attitude determines your direction. That's about it. Nothing else. Blame um, nothing else apart from your attitude in case things go wrong. Right, guys? So it's, it's definitely easier said than done, but certainly with a little bit of practice, I'm sure we'll all be there. All right. So in this chapter, um, we mainly learn about uh, what transpiration is, the different types of transpiration, mechanism of stomatal transpiration, um, and how exactly stomatal transpiration works, as in the mechanism behind it, um, and the significance of transpiration, gut lesion and bleeding, which are two additional terms here, um, and the factors affecting transpiration, both external and internal factors, the adaptation to reduce transpiration, and several experiments related to transpiration all right guys so that's about it starting off we start the chapter by talking about what exactly transpiration is right as a process what exactly is it so we can say that this is the process of loss of water um, in the form of vapor from aerial parts of a plant okay from the leaves and other radial parts of a plant so as you can see here the zoomed in uh, view of the the channel the water column um, which continuously moves as a result of transpirational pull that's what you see here right starting from uh, as low as the root hairs um, and it just goes upward through the xylem and ultimately it leaves through the stomata or any other part right <clears throat> so um Coming to the types of transpiration, the most, most common form of transpiration um, is stomatal transpiration. So uh, transpiration, we can say, occurs in aerial parts as we have already uh, discussed. Majorly, a good portion of this occurs through the leaves and that too through the stomata of the leaves, right? So those tiny openings which are guarded by a pair of bean-shaped cells called guard cells. These are what stomata are. So this we call stomatal transpiration. All right. Now coming to cuticular transpiration. Now transpiration may also directly happen from the surface of leaves and stems. There is a waxy coating called the cuticle. That's what you see here, right? This is the cuticle. Just outside the epidermis. Okay. So through that, transpiration can occur and we call that cuticular transpiration. Now, apart from stomatal and cuticular, there's also what we call lenticular transpiration, wherein transpiration happens from the lenticels, tiny openings found along the bark of um, woody stems. All right. So these are the three major kinds of stomatal, cuticular and lenticular transpiration. Okay. Now coming to the mechanism of stomatal transpiration. Okay, how exactly does it work? So um, all you need to understand here is the structure, how exactly the cross section of a leaf uh, looks, right? So uh, you need to have the understanding that there's a cuticle, there is the um, upper epidermis and the lower epidermis. But of course, in this in particular image, the upper epidermis hasn't been focused on much. Okay, so just below the epidermis would be the layer called mesophyll there's a uh, palisade mesophyll there's also spongy mesophyll as you can see with plenty of air spaces right um so mainly we need to keep in mind that the stomata are found on the epidermis found in between the epidermal cells okay so here uh, is an example of stomata guard cells which are guarding stomata the opening stomata um, so, how does it actually work? Um, starting with, <clears throat> starting with um, the process of imbibition. Now, we must keep in mind uh, that transpiration acts as a pulling effect. So, if you think about it from that aspect, transpiration can be point number one, wherein it creates a pulling effect, um, pulling water out of the aerial parts of the leaves, um, 
through the stomata of course so basically what happens is there is a tiny little bit of gap which is created by loss of that particular water molecule in order to fill that up right in order to fill that up through diffusion or by different means water from the previous uh, the, basically the previous water molecule which is continuous in the channel in the column of water like the column which I showed you a little while earlier that comes and fills up the gap and the one before that fills up this gap and so on this continues till the root hair cell okay so transpiration um, and then you need to keep in mind uh, diffusion osmosis right basically uh, some small portion of water may enter into cells by osmosis as well from adjacent cells um, evaporation may occur from cell walls that's a different thing but always keep in mind most of the water through this channel of water uh, through this channel of uh, uh, yes water it mainly travels along the cell walls by what we call imbibition um, so I think um, we've also discussed in the previous chapter the main thing to keep in mind about the forces of cohesion and adhesion, right? So they play a major role here. So imbibition, cohesion, adhesion, diffusion, osmosis, transpiration. These are the major terms you need to know associated with this. Ultimately, you need to remember that this is how major part of the water gets lost through the stomata some of it gets lost through the cuticles a little bit of it gets lost through the lenti cells okay now um, going a little deeper into what is the science behind stomatal transpiration right so um, of course we know plants they don't have any sort of um, hormones or uh, brain control or anything of um, the the transpiration process right so the simplest thing to keep in mind is that stomata or the guard cells basically when they swell up when they are turgid and full of water they their inner walls stretch apart and open out releasing the stomata or opening out the stomata okay so turgid guard cells result in uh, open stomata whereas flaccid guard cells lead to closure of stomata which is loss of water uh, due to whatever reason maybe like uh, uh, because of photosynthesis not happening or whatever it may be during different times of the day this is how it works okay so flaccid guard cells closure of stomata because it doesn't want to risk losing any further water uh, turgid guard cells would mean open stomata right as simple as that keep that point in mind okay so this is it open stomata wherein uh, water k plus ions and water as a result by osmosis enter into the guard cells and as a result stomata would open whereas closed stomata would be the opposite wherein k plus ions would be lost and as a result by exosmosis water would also get lost and the stomata would be closed okay so these are um, the basics of stomatal transpiration now children let me add here for those of you who are not aware of the amazing courses we have at Vedantu and then we'll continue further with transpiration uh, now once you subscribe for Vedantu Pro you can um, be a part of our unlimited live classes with fun and high level quizzes okay um, and one very good thing is that you get to compete with students across the country and across the world also so that actually feels very very good and improves your confidence okay um, and then of course uh, there are interactive rape replays just in case you miss out on any session when it's happening live right live quizzes and leader boots would still be a part of this um, and after every single session you get to download the handwritten notes of your favorite master teachers right guys um, and of course in class doubt solving <coughs> quality tests assignments basically session assignments chapter assignments everything's going to be a part of this so what is the advantage it is going to help boost your confidence to face the final exams right you will be completely prepared for it um, on top of this there are a couple of added bonuses and that those are 5000 plus micro courses and free crash courses for competitive exams these come as an added bonus to those of you who are registered for Vedantu Pro 
okay so uh, as far as the pricing is concerned i'll tell you but to check out more details children visit the link in the description box below and check out the pinned comment as well the coupon code is ambpro okay ambpro so why is the coupon code actually important i'll tell you now this is it a one month of vedantu pro subscription without any discounts would normally cost you rupees 2699 okay 2699 so what all does it include this comes with a 30 day subscription as it as it indicates right per month and in these 30 days you get to access approximately 200 live sessions if not more if used uh, rightly you can even uh, access even more but on an average it's around 200 live sessions which you can you have the possibilities of availing um so yes uh, I will tell you a little more about what would the per session cost um, if uh, be if that's the case, right? But before that, just keep in mind one more very important point which is not mentioned here. The price which is mentioned here, it's not a per subject cost. This is the price you would pay for science, maths, English and social studies, everything together. Okay, so uh, this is without any discounts. But as I told you, the coupon code is very important, A-M-B-P-R-O just apply that you will be able to access it at 1349 for 30 days okay now again further we have a special 2020 21 academic year plan which is going to be valid till june 21 because um the cbse exams are going to be happening in the months of may and june this year right so assuming icse might also possibly be happening around that or at least you might definitely need our help until then probably we have brought in a special offer for you so until this you will be able to avail this at 1166 that's about it this is the price you would pay for all the four major subjects your science subjects your social study subjects uh, english and mathematics so i personally think that is a wonderful offer so uh, if you're still not uh, sure about whether to go about it whether to go for it calculate the per class price and it's right here for you divided by 200 so that comes down to as low as rupees 5.83 okay that is all that you pay for one quality session at Vedantu. Yes, guys. So please make the best use of it before it gets late. Okay, guys. All right. So coming to the significance of transpiration. Now, we've discussed a lot. We've seen the water's transpiration. We've seen the types of transpiration. Um, and how does uh, stomatal transpiration work, right? The mechanism behind it. Now, why does transpiration occur? Or why is it important? Right. First of all, just like sweating or perspiration occurs in the human body, transpiration has a cooling effect on the plant body. That's the first thing. Secondly, it acts as a sort of suction force. Remember, we call it transpirational pull to pull up that column of water. Transpirational or transpiration pull. Right, a transpirational pull. That sounds a little better. Okay, so that is the suction force. So as a result, it helps in um, transport of water, minerals and a lot of substances across the plant body. And thirdly, distribution, right? Leaves being present at the tip would promote uh, the distribution of water and mineral salts to all the parts of the plant. So that's basically the last point which I've told you already. The temperature uh, cooling down the plant body acting as a suction force, helping in uh, ascent of sap, and finally, distribution of water and mineral salts to every part of the plant body. Now, um, also, one very interesting thing is that uh, we keep complaining about global climatic change. So, transpiration has the ability to increase moisture content and bring in uh, rain, okay, moisture content in the atmosphere and bring down rain. So, this is amazing. This is why we say... Um, forests are like are uh, you know a very very important super important valuable resource for us because without them perhaps the earth is gonna i don't know i don't want to think about it okay um and then you need to know a couple of uh, additional terms which are guttation and bleeding now guttation is the process by which water is lost in the form of liquid droplets from a long 
the margins of leaves. Okay, so this occurs through uh, specialized openings which we call hydrothodes. Gattation occurs through hydrothodes. Uh, always remember it is mainly seen in uh, during early in the mornings um, when because uh, during the night transpiration wouldn't have occurred um, or it may also specifically be seen in the case of herbaceous plants like as in very very small plants and then bleeding uh, this uh, like the name indicates it occurs due to injury but then the only difference uh, from human beings is that it's not blood which is escaping through the ruptured parts um, it is some sort of liquid some sort of sap which escapes the um, the from the ruptured or cut parts of the plant so mainly <coughs> we can say that it is root pressure which is like adding to uh, bleeding or aiding in bleeding because it's pushing from the bottom root pressure now coming to factors affecting transpiration there's a set of external factors there's a set of internal factors as well as far as your exams are concerned this is a very very important topic so i'll just mark that out for you so that you don't miss it right um, intensity of sunlight temperature wind velocity humidity carbon dioxide concentration and atmospheric pressure these are the major external factors which affect transpiration children i would suggest do not memorize any of this all you need to do is use your basic sense if you know what is transpiration and um, what each of these factors could possibly do if you could logically arrive at that you don't have to worry about memorizing at all for example intensity of sunlight um do, when it's like a very very bright and sunny day what happens in the case of human beings we tend to sweat a lot right likewise transpiration occurs a lot almost throughout the day when there is um highly intense sunlight uh, likewise temperature very very similar to that increase in temperature would allow more transpiration to occur wind velocity um, imagine yourself standing in a place where um, a very very heavy wind or breeze is blowing what would happen after some time you would feel your skin parched up and dry right that's because um, the wind has carried with it has stripped off a lot of moisture from your skin right so likewise even in the case of plants velocity of wind would increase the rate of transpiration it pulls out a lot of moisture from the plants this way just think about everything definitely you will be able to give the right answer okay so okay now coming to factors affecting transpiration there's a set of external factors there's a set of internal factors as well as far as your exams are concerned this is a very very important topic so i'll just mark that out for you so that you don't miss it right um, intensity of sunlight temperature wind velocity humidity carbon dioxide concentration and atmospheric pressure these are the major external factors which affect transpiration children i would suggest do not memorize any of this all you need to do is use your basic sense if you know what is transpiration and um, what each of these factors could possibly do if you could logically arrive at that you don't have to worry about memorizing at all for example intensity of sunlight um do, when it's like a very very bright and sunny day what happens in the case of human beings we tend to sweat a lot right likewise transpiration occurs a lot almost throughout the day when there is um highly intense sunlight uh, likewise temperature very very similar to that increase in temperature would allow more transpiration to occur wind velocity um, imagine yourself standing in a place where um, a very very heavy wind or breeze is blowing what would happen after some time you would feel your skin parched up and dry right that's because um, the wind has carried with it has stripped off a lot of moisture from your skin right so likewise even in the case of plants velocity of wind would increase the rate of transpiration it pulls out a lot of moisture from the plants this way just think about everything definitely you'll be able to give the right answer okay now coming to the internal factors it's not really much chiefly we can say that it is water content in the leaves which decide internally how much transpiration is going to occur um, what i mean is if the water water content of the leaves is reduced uh, by any reason it could be because of insufficient absorption by water you know, absorption of water by the roots or whatever the reason may be the leaves would end up 
becoming flaccid, they would wilt down and as a result transpiration is reduced. Why do you think so? It's because stomata would close as a natural reflex to, um, to avoid excess water loss, stomata would close. This is the reason. So this is an internal factor. Now, um, as in the case of desert plants and all of that, um, what are the adaptations to reduce excessive transpiration? One is sunken stomata. Stomata may be found deeper um, into the epidermal layer or they may be covered by hair-like structures okay, to prevent excessive transpiration. Also, fewer number of stomata uh, ensures that transpiration rate would also be naturally lowered right narrow leaves leaves may become much narrower to reduce the surface area which is exposed for transpiration right because um, bigger the surface of the leaf is broader the surface of the leaf is more the number of stomata would be as a result greater would be transpiration so to avoid that leaves would be relatively much narrower reduced exposed surfaces Right? This is also um, an adaptation like uh, the leaves could get uh, curled up, rolled up um, or however like in different species it could be different maybe folded up to reduce, ex uh, to reduce the exposed surface. And then loss of leaves now um, as in the case of cactus and many other such similar plants the leaves are pretty much lost or very very reduced in the form of spiny structures. This is again a super cool adaptation to uh, reduce transpiration then having a thick cuticle right having a thick waxy cuticle outside the epidermis would ensure that um, water loss is minimized even like um, we have to remember that even the water that falls on the surface of leaves that would also be absorbed very little when there is thicker cuticle but I think um, that is lesser of a problem compared to loss through transpiration because roots can take care of that okay so this is about the importance of a thick cuticle then the demonstration of transpiration children all of these experiments are part of your syllabus okay so i will mark this for you entirely in your section b you must have a very good understanding of the experiments related to demonstration of transpiration how um, how do you demonstrate that transpiration does occur starting from that to anything that it is water which is released through transpiration um, all of the bell jar experiments the cobalt chloride paper and the ganong's photometer experiment all of those are part of it children you can just go through the notes okay everything has been mentioned here for you so these are the major concepts coming under the chapter transpiration definitely go through them and make the best use of the notes that we have and children let me remind you the coupon code for vedantu pro subscription is ambpro okay right oh so that's about it click on the like button if you have found this useful share it with all your icse class 10 friends because definitely a one shot series is something that will certainly help every child um, boost their confidence during the exam season right pre both for many of you so definitely make the best use of it children and stay subscribed in case you haven't done that yet uh, because on this channel we down to 9th and 10th english we do a lot of amazing sessions just to make your lives a lot easier all right guys so that's about it from my side until we meet again stay home stay happy and stay healthy bye bye